My favorite sword in my small collection. Let's talk about it right after the intro. Hi, I'm Peter and welcome back to the History and Saber Suite, the channel where I talk about HEMA, history and swords. First of all, I'm sorry I couldn't keep up with my regular schedule for uploading because I'm currently in the process of finishing all my last courses for my degree, so the past few weeks have been quite labor intensive. Now I'm back and I can tell you there's already more in the pipeline. My next video is going to be a sparring video and it's going to be up this week or next week. So with that being said, let's get into today's video. Okay, now what I have here in my hands is the British 1821 pattern Royal Artillery Officer's Sabre, which is basically the same model as the Light Cavalry Officer's Sabre, the only difference being that the blade is standard infantry length and not cavalry length, which means it's around 32 and a half inches, which is exactly 82 centimeters on this example. Now let's go over the single parts of the sword. First of all, uh, the most obvious thing about it, if when you look at it, is the three bar hilt. Now this guard here is called a three bar hilt because it replaced the single knuckle bow of the 1796 light cavalry saber that came before it with two additional bars on the side where your arm and hands protrude a lot more than on your left side. And it has also got this small protection, small bar here for the thumb on the side. So that's basically known as a three bar hilt and it was by no means a very unique design. Many nations of the period used similar, uh, similar guard designs to this. There were French swords using three bar hilts and various other nations also made use of some kind of three bar hilt. So the design is not unique, but is very functional. And personally, I think it is very aesthetic. Now, it also has a steel backstrap that connects the pommel and the guard and runs along the back of the grip which is of course covered in fish skin or shagreen and has some copper brass wiring you can see the peen on this example very well it's absolutely flush with the rest of the pommel and it's a very nice smooth peen you only just about feel it if you run your finger across the pommel now, this example still retains its leather washer, which you can see right here. And this is basically the reason why some antique swords get loose in the hilt and start rattling over time because this leather washer gets lost because it just rots away. And this creates some movement between the guard and the shoulder of the blade. Um, but in this case, the original leather washer is still present and everything is tight and secure as it should be. And another good way to test whether the, everything is solid, basically just hit the blade slightly and feel the vibration through the whole blade and tang through the grip. And it wouldn't vibrate for very long and it also wouldn't make a nice sound if it weren't secure. Now onto the blade, it's basically a standard 1845 pattern infantry officer's blade. It's the so-called Wilkinson type fuller blade with a single edge on the front and a double edge for the last, what's that, 30 centimeters of the blade on the back and a spear point. So it is good for thrusting and cutting and I like this blade a lot and what I like about it in contrast to modern fencing weapons or replicas is the complex distal taper. And that means that it starts out quite thick here, almost a centimeter thick at the base. My other, other 45 blade is actually nine millimeters or 10 millimeters, so a full centimeter. This one's actually not as wide, but you can still see it starts out wide, gets a little thinner up until here, and right around the center of percussion, maybe a few centimeters after, it tapers down to a very, very thin blade. 
which is great for thrusting and for cutting because it meets less resistance. It is met with less resistance when it passes through a target. How do I know it's not a light cavalry sword? It is etched to the Royal Artillery, as you can see here. You can see the burning grenade, you can see the field gun, the artil artillery gun, and on the other side, you can see these um, lightning bolts and wings. And I always say it looks like the snitch from Harry Potter. Now, why do I like this one so much? Overall, it's not a very rare sword at all. It's quite a common sword, actually. But why do I like it so much? Basically, it's the only one I've got of this type. And, well, that's not the actual reason, but I really, really like it because it's so well made. Um, the flexibility is just right, as you can see. It flexes in the last third of the blade, as it should. Uh, the distal taper is very, very nicely done. And also, it's a light sword. It doesn't look as light as it actually is, but it's 819 grams. That's a little less than average, I would say, for these 45 pattern bladed swords. And I love the three bar design, and this one just handles so well. It's the number one reason why I like this sword so much. I've got another 45, which is the standard infantry officer's saber, or sword because it's straight, uh, this example that I've got, which you might have seen in some of my previous videos but it doesn't feel as nice as this one. This is really a sword that I would use. I wouldn't hesitate using this anywhere on campaign, anywhere really, in a real duel. This is my sword. I consider this my sword because it handles so nicely. It's not clunky. It's absolutely not tip heavy. My other one feels more like a basket hilted backsword or broadsword because it's quite, um, it has a lot more mass in the blade. Whereas this does have some mass in the blade, as it should, but it's absolutely not tip heavy. It's very nimble, it's very light, and the point moves around effortlessly. And it's a really, really nice sword. And what I also enjoy about this sword is being a mid-Victorian example, it still has this flared grip here, which provides really good, protect, uh, really good grip because you can rest your little finger against it and generate power while pushing into the base of the grip like this. I really like this about this sword. Um, my other one has a more straight grip because um, they sometimes were straighter without this flared bottom here, which is fine because you can still use a trick and rest your finger against the base of the guard itself like this if the grip itself doesn't flare, but it's way more comfortable if you actually have a grip that flares towards the pommel. Now, I think this is a very, very nicely made sword by a good quality manufacturer, and the blade is just so nicely done. I really don't see anything that's wrong with this sword. I really, really like this sword overall, and it's always a bonus if you've got a scabbard that fits perfectly. This one is a steel scabbard that's been nickel plated, so it has a nice shine to it. And it also holds the sword very nicely. The leather washer is in the right place and it holds the sword very nicely. It doesn't fall out at all and you can pull it out effortlessly. It's just such a nice sword and I really wanted to make a video just about this one. It's not going anywhere. It's my favorite that I own. Now, if you like this video, please give me a like, subscribe to my channel for more content in the future, and also click the little notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. Now, thanks again for watching and see you next time for my sparring video. Bye-bye.